For my research question, I looked at to what extent did the use of 48 frames per second have a positive and or negative impact on The Hobbit. I will find out whether P.T. Jackson in 2012 introducing the 48 frames per second to audiences in the first Hobbit actually made an impact in a beneficial way or not. Finding out if something like this is a groundbreaking development that will continue or ultimately it's just another trial and error. A part of my research was going to the BVE. There I got an interview with someone from Final Cut who thought clearly it had a negative impact on The Hobbit. I personally, I don't like it. It's, it's a happy medium, isn't it? It's between, it, it maybe makes sport look better. You get a crisper image with things like f fast moving sports like football and hockey and uh, stuff like that. All of the films that we're brought up on, half of them were made before video. So they were all shot at 24 frames a second. And it doesn't, you don't look at them and go, oh dear, that would have been better if it was a faster frame rate. Yeah. Or if I could, you know, in terms of film, it's a total red herring. Because actually one of the things about film is it's supposed to look unreal. It looks dreamy. I don't, I don't know any, any medium apart from sport, and they're welcome to do it in sport. Yeah. But I don't think sport should dictate the rest of the TV. In fact, if they find a way of, you know, making channels different frame rates, that would be the way go, way, way forward. Because I don't want to see this crisp sort of high frame rate. The main points that I learned from the interview was that he did not like 48 frames per second, had no interest to him personally, and was completely against it. He did not think it would help the future. However, he thinks it's more of a happy medium. It's good for sport, creating a more crispy or fast-moving image, but not good for film. Film should look unreal and dreamy. No medium apart from sport should use it, and it shouldn't dictate film. He doesn't want to see it used again, as it's all about the story. When The Hobbit was released, it was faced as The Guardian rightfully put it with mixed responses. However, most responses were negative. For example, The Hollywood Reporter printed no one would continue to use the 48 frames per second, and both Gizmodo and Forbes saying that the 48 frames per second fouled. Some critics also said that The Hobbit looked too unrealistic and looks like a video game and creates a non-cinematic picture. Or even going on to say that, that the 48 frames per second made the film look tatty and fake. With all the negative response and reviews, this eventually caused Jackson to have to act. As shown by The Guardian in the second installment of The Hobbit, in Desolation of Smaug, he toned down the 48 frames per second. While I was at BVE, I also interviewed someone from Adobe, however his opinions were a bit more positive. I think they had mixed reviews. I think the high frame rate stuff is probably more relevant than the stereoscopic angle. I think uh, Jackson's probably kicking himself that he only shot Lord of the Rings in 2K. Do you think that it added an extra element to the film? Not for me personally. A lot of the directors are pushing technical boundaries, but I think ultimately you've still got to think about how it's going to be presented on the lowest common denominator. A lot more people watch movies on iPads now. You know, obviously you can go out, you buy bigger and bigger tellies that are 3D and curved and all the rest of it, but who cares if they're just watching it on, on an iPad? It's still got to, still got to translate ultimately to whatever you're going to see it on. And I think that the market for personal consumption of video is growing just as much as the larger format screen. The main points I learned from the Adobe interview was that he did think the 48 frames per second in The Hobbit had a lot of mixed reviews, however thought it was different and good. The 48 frames per second was more relevant than the stereoscopic angle. He also went on to say that it may affect the future, causing for other movies to move to 48 frames per second too, as it is a groundbreaking development. He also said that this will affect directors, as they're always looking to push the boundaries. They need to meet consumer needs of what they want and like. So in conclusion, from all the research I found out from the interviews and online research, I will conclude and say that ultimately the 48 frames per second had a negative impact on The Hobbit. This is mainly because too many critiques have said it made the film look fake and tacky, taking away the cinematic visual of the film and making The Hobbit look almost cartoonish and cheap. In addition, there hasn't been great support for the 48 frames per second, such as online or in the industry, so no one will follow on with the 48 frames. So for now, the 48 frames per second will be known as a hit and miss.